Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk a little bit about Arrow Garden. So I've made a bunch of videos on Arrow Garden and uh, people ask a ton of questions about the unit and uh, they want to know the nutrients I use, um, the, the uh, lighting timing and all that stuff. And um, today I'm going to try to answer uh, some of the questions that get asked so frequently so um, I'll just gonna wing it and uh, if you have more questions in the future you can just uh, leave it below and I may try to make a follow-up video so that uh, I can answer some of those questions so um, the first question is um, how big of a pepper plant uh, can the arrow garden grow and the answer for that is very big so you can see here I have one of my cross and this one here is still growing it is not done growing yet and I started this on December 17th 2019 and today is uh, so they grow very very fast and they look gorgeous you see the the trunk of the plant is very thick and it started to produce flowers already and it's still trying to branch out at the top and as you can see it's already touching the light so that brings me to the second question uh, how close uh, do you have to keep your light so normally when I grow peppers I usually like to keep them about usually under a foot away from the light and if you see that your plant is stretching too much then you can lower it and uh, the light these hood right here they're very cool so even if the the leaves are touching they will not burn so that is one of the advantage of uh, the Aragon um, light hood it would not burn your plant so if you go out of town and you forget to raise it it's fine as you can see here my plants are touching that uh, the hood and it's just fine and actually because it's only a 45 watts if you want short stocky plant you should um, lower the light to around six to eight inches above your pepper plant and what that does is it will provide good nice intensity for your pepper plant to grow nice and short because if light are uh, not sufficient then the plant would stretch so if you see, um, you see here, if uh, between, this is a node here, and that's a node, and that's a node. So if, if it's in about an inch between the node, it's okay. If it is two inches to three inches between each node, that means the intensity of your light is not strong enough. Either use a stronger bulb or lower uh, your light, and that would fix the problem. Okay, so, um, Let's see what else they ask. Oh, yes. Um, the, the What is the timing on the light of my system? So I run the Arrow Garden from, uh, I think, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. So within that time, it turns on by itself and it turns off by itself. And uh, also for the pump, I set the pump to run like once every hour it doesn't have to be on all the time so you don't need to run it 24 7 you can set it to run one hour or just let it run one hour rest two hours or one one hour rest three hours it doesn't matter just go with whatever you want sometimes I don't even run the pump at all so right now I'm not even running the pump at all so it's fine uh, the plants uh, is amazing in this setup and you will notice that uh, if you don't run the pump the roots within the unit starts to float and it de develop these fuzzes and the fuzzes is uh, sort of like a, a way for the the roots to catch air it's just so amazing if you if you pay attention uh, let me show you the root system so you can see what i'm talking about so i just moved these plants here that i started away from this spot you see how it has more room so that's what i use to start younger plants and get them ready so here is the root, you see there? You're gonna get massive root system. I mean, one plant will fill up this entire 
system with roots so the bigger they get the more roots they will develop and you can see see those fuzzes right there right above so those fuzzes there are like sort of like air roots they capture air even if the pump is not running and if the pump is not running for a while you see the roots at the bottom sometimes they would float up and they will, will create some more air roots and they would breathe so air is not an issue in the air garden but if you do feed the air into the unit it actually helps uh, the plants to grow better roots and healthier roots and also avoid um, root rot so having air down there will help with the root rot because when you grow pepper plants you grow them for many months you don't just grow them for like 30 days and done so uh, uh, air is a good thing for the unit okay so also um after growing uh, with this unit for a few months you're gonna see deposit these are calcium deposit so clean those off they're, they're not gonna affect your plants if you forget to but it's good idea to clean those off because the deposit will collect and then it will just make your air garden uh, look kind of messy so try to clean those up every I would say four to five months just clean it one time this whole thing on top right here can actually be taken out and it can be taken apart so it's very easy to clean so try to clean those and uh, let's move on to the next question um, what else do I grow in the arrow garden so I grow peppers and I also grow miniature peppers you see I took uh, oops <laughs> I took the uh, the base right here out and I'm actually just using the vent I mean the hood sorry the hood the light hood to grow these mini projects and you can do amazing a crossing experiment with um, this unit and that is what I've been doing for the past few years I use them to create these uh, crosses you see this is one of the, my creation right here and um, this is my lingria so the sangria cross with the linzo this is a very beautiful variety and it produced a gazillion pods and this is the f2 so I already have three f3 going uh, because I have already collected fruits off of this plant one time so I'm growing it right now to get the next generation so by summer I may have F4 and F5 ready to go so that's really a good way to speed it up and also when you grow uh, a bunch of uh, your um, your generations like different crosses uh, you grow multiple plant because once you grow uh, different or a bunch of them uh, they, the variations will surprise you so this particular one here I had a, a, a one that turns out chocolate so it's really cool and also one is really really hot and one is sweet so uh, I'm actually growing them both to see uh, what else I can get out of those but I really like the way they look they're beautiful they can grow in any size container and will produce very very fast so this is a one of those pepper plants that people that are impatient would want because in very little time and even little space and even with little light you can get <laughs> good amount of pods and um, I left the parent plant outside in the cold for a while and it, it actually lived through very very cold conditions so it's a very versatile variety and I did all this using the Aero Garden unit with the mini systems you see so you grow two plants and I already made a bunch of videos on this so I will link you guys so you can watch it so you can take the pollen from here and pollinate the other variety and you can see how small this is this thing is like under two inches and I'll show you there are pods here you see this here I miniaturized it so I have peppers right there you see that two peppers there and then I have peppers right there look at this it's like a miniature and actually this one grows double so I'm having a ton of peppers you see this one here too so there's a this I mean this variety here it's a, this is a new one it's ridiculous you see look at all those flowers and this plant is just this big <laughs> that's like an inch and a half and um, a very cool unit just 
an absolutely gorgeous plant that is just so unique. Look at all those flowers down there. I think there are as many flowers as there are leaves and the flowers are so like compacted all together. It's just like a little strange at the same time. So you see that? That is um, <laughs> what you can do in the arrow garden. So I have a few more over there. You see how you can get pretty good pots right here? And uh, these are just um, DIY systems that I made. And here, look at this one. This one is actually supposed to be a very large variety, but you know, you're able to miniaturize it in a system like this. You see all those flowers? And it, it, it looks like a large version of itself, but much smaller, you see? And then there, those are my new starts. I have a bunch of new starts here. Okay, so uh, that is what you can do with um, the arrow garden. So the next um, thing I'm going to discuss is uh, nutrients. Um, do you have to use the arrow garden nutrients when you use the arrow garden unit? And the answer for that is no, you don't have to. But I do recommend that you grow uh, or use nutrients that are liquid, like this here. This is the Dyna Grow, and this is the Dyna Bloom. I'm gonna go into details with this. I'm not sponsored by Arrow Garden or anything I'm showing you guys. This is just strictly for information, so that will help you decide if you wanna buy the Arrow Garden or, or help you choose something else if it's not for you. So that, that is all I'm doing. I'm, I'm not sponsored by these guys. So the reason I'm using Dyna Grow and Dyna Bloom is because it is a one nutrients mix there's no parts you just mix five milliliter to one gallon of water and then you ph it so set it to around 6.0 ph balance it to that much and that is all you need just and then you pour it into the unit and that is it and the same thing for this once you mix it get it nice ph five milliliter of that and you're all set. So people have wondered, do you have to use both? Um, so the thing with the bloom and the grow is that for the grow, you use it when the, the plants are not blooming, like it's from this stage here, from this stage on all the way to it's about to bloom flowers. And then you switch, you don't mix them together so that you just switch over. Um, normally for me, I'm, I'm pretty lazy, so I don't even switch at all. So what I do is I use this throughout the entire life of my plants. So for this guy here, I have not used bloom yet, but bloom will, um, sort of like help, uh, assist the fruits. Like it will produce more flowers and better flowering so that because the bloom is um, specially formulated for that purpose as you can see it's 3 12 and 6 this is a 795 this is NPK so when you uh, look at um, nutrients uh, check these numbers out so you can tell which one is growing which one is bloom it's usually label and you should always go with um, what they recommend but if you don't know, then you should go onto the website and check it out. But for me, five milliliter only for every gallon. Same with this. And I don't use it together. I use this for start all the way to the plants start to bloom. Then I switch to here. But usually I don't switch to here at all. I just use this the entire time. Okay. And for using a pH meter, so I've used uh, many, many type of uh, pH meter over the years, and there are two that I really like. Now, this is one of them, and you do pay more for this, but guys, the price is, um, it, it does sort of like, um, it's worth it, because you buy those cheap ones, they'll just run out and die, or it becomes inaccurate uh, every so often, so you keep having to buy new ones. And I, I've, I've used them before. I even got some free ones, and I got some that are like um, $12 or $14 on Amazon, 
and those work well but very short time and then they become inaccurate so uh, i invested in a more expensive one uh, i have the other one that i use it, it's called the mp80 i'll link you guys and i've used that one for years and it works so well um, but then I switched to this because I wanted to try a different brand. So I'll link you guys. So if you want to check this out, you don't have to buy it. Don't, don't listen to me. Just read your own reviews. Um, you will also need um, the pH so that you can measure your pH uh, accurately. Okay. And for adjusting your pH, it's important to have these uh, uh, standard pH right here solution. So this is a seven. So I usually just uh, test my pH solution to the meter every uh, week or two, just in case, because um, it, you know if your pH is off, then your plants may be lacking uh, or you know suffering in <laughs> the imbalanced solution. Okay. So how often do you add um, nutrients for plants like this? it drinks the nutrients up very quickly so every three to four days you can you can open this up and see that it'll drink it up down to here um, you try to fill it up before it dries up completely but um, you can allow the plant the, 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 the container to be all the way down to the bottom before you refill but the problem with that is your pump might be running so the lower the water level then the pump may have problem and i've heard that there you know the unit may uh, be damaged if uh, the pump is not having water to circulate so i've never let that happen um, so be careful with that so just try to monitor your water level and make sure that it is always at a, at the right amount so that the pump can circulate okay and um I usually would refill the unit like four or five times before I pour it out completely, clean it out a little bit, add some water, rinse out the roots, and then add fresh new nutrients. That way the plant will stay healthy, uh, it doesn't have any residue that cause the roots to stress, and then um, the plant can fruit. And many people have struggled with uh, this unit to produce fruits because they say that uh, the plant looks healthy and it's grown like crazy, but all the flowers are dropping. Uh, how do they fix that? And from my personal experience, uh, I don't know for a fact because nothing is really for sure when you grow into in the arrow garden. Uh, the main thing that causes uh, uh, flowers to drop is that you have too much nitrogen basically you growing you using grow while the plant is blooming because what happened is when the plant is focused on growth then it will keep growing and it will drop flowers in order to keep growing so if you want the plant to fruit sort of like reduce feeding it kind of like um if you feed it too much it'll keep growing and growing and growing and it'll drop all of the flowers so reduce the feeding you can actually reduce your feeding to half like feed it half instead of five milliliter do like half of that and then see what happens uh, usually when you um, when the plant start to not get the resources that it needs it kind of stress out a little bit and then it go into um, sort of like a, a, a mode of producing because it has to secure uh, the, the future of the fruits so that it can spread the next generation so if it feels like there's nothing left to eat it'll try it will produce fruits and that is from my own personal experience I don't know that for a fact because I'm not a scientist so but that is one of the things that I noticed over the years of growing peppers okay so another one is um your ph is imbalanced so imbalanced ph will cause the plant to like not able to pull up the the correct resources that it needs so it'll stress and then it may drop flowers so during the bloom stage the plant often drink a lot of um the different type of nutrients it just pulls up what it needs and it leaves the stuff behind and because when it does that the ph fluctuates very very quickly 
especially when the plants are blooming. So if your plants are blooming, check your pH often. You will notice that it fluctuates very often. So try to make sure that it's always uh, the proper amount. I mean, if you can, you can wait a few days, it's fine, but it's good to stay consistent so that your plants can stay healthy and produce peppers. Okay, and uh, I think someone asked, you're growing this indoor, um, do you need um, bugs to pollinate the plants? And the answer for that is no, because peppers are self-pollinator. So when they have flower like this, all you have to do is shake the tree like this, or shake, shake the plant, and that will drop pollen and it will pollinate uh, the fruit, and then you have peppers. Um, be careful if you grow two plants next to each other, because if you do that, pollen will fly and spread over. So then it may cross and become something else, okay? And you don't know if it does that because it's unintentional, so you're not gonna know. So you can grow the same variety in close proximity. Um, if you want to, re you know, keep the sort of like that breed pure, you can cover it up with uh, some kind of um, covering, like a, a pollen bag, and that's what I do. And then once the pepper um, become a fruit, you can tag it and, and so that you know those are pure. So these here, I've grown them separately so they have uh, fruits already. And uh, I'm gonna tag these and collect seeds from those so I know those are the ones that I want. Okay, so I think this video has been pretty long already. Uh, there's so much more to cover. So if you guys want um, to know more, just leave some, some comments. And because the video is so long, I'm going to uh, put a timeline in the description and then you can go directly to the question that you're interested in and that way you don't waste your time. So uh, you can also use the Aragorn to start seedling. So as I've done here, so it's a, it's a great way to start your seedlings. They sell these trays um, like this here that has uh, 50 um, cells and that would allow you to start 50 plants at the same time. So it's a pretty cool thing to do. Uh, actually, I really, really like that 50 cell units because uh, it can, you know, sort of like circulate water on its own and then it, it, it germinate seeds really fast. So that's a, that's a cool way to also use your air garden. You can also use your air garden to grow herbs, lettuce, uh, any of the herb that you, you um, can find in your garden like basil, um, mint and stuff like that. Basil would do amazing in this unit. So uh, peppers as well. Uh, you can also grow tomatoes. I've, I've grown tomatoes. Uh, when you grow tomato, try to grow those determinate or the dwarf variety. That way it doesn't outgrow the unit and go all the way up here. The unit can actually extend pretty, pretty tall. Like I think it goes all the way to um, I don't know the exact measurement, I forgot. But you can go on to the Aragorn website and find out. So um, guys, I'm going to stop the video right here. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, this is for people that have been asking and I haven't, I wasn't able to answer. So if you have more questions, I would love to make another video as a follow-up to discuss some of those questions. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and comment.